So here we have a second example of a Hess's Law problem, where we're not really going to do anything different than we did in the first problem. Getting a second look is always useful to help reinforce what's going on, and there are some pieces of information in this particular problem that are going to be leading into our next topic, which is the idea of the use of an equation form of Hess's Law using standard enthalpies of formation for the reactants and products. And so I'm going to point out just how some of this problem will tie into what comes next. But again, how we're going to approach this problem is not going to be any different. Uh, let's take a look at the chemicals in the overall balanced equation and effectively figure out which step reactions have those chemicals in one and only one place. And so the first thing we're going to do is kind of our list, our bookkeeping of what's going on. And what we see here is this reaction is the reaction between ethanol and oxygen to give us acetic acid and water. Effectively, this is how we make vinegar from, let's say, wine or alcohol. Essentially, you get some extra reaction with oxygen in the air and you form vinegar. This happens in some cases if you don't have a very good cork in a bottle of wine that it has turned into vinegar on you over time because of this reaction. But let's take a look. The first reactant we have is ethanol, CH3CH2OH, in the liquid form. And it turns out that that shows up in only one step reaction, and that's step reaction one. Here it is right here. Now, what we do notice, though, is step reaction one has two stoichiometric coefficients of ethanol as a product, while our overall balanced equation has it as a one stoichiometric coefficient as a reactant. So what we know is that step reaction one, we really need to reverse and multiply by one half as well to create a new version of the step reaction that's going to give us one stoichiometric coefficient of ethanol as a reactant. So I'm going to maybe do that down here and uh, just so we can see how I'm keeping on top of things. So of course if I flip things that's going to be the ethanol liquid and if I want that stoichiometric coefficient of 2 to become 1, I have to multiply by half. But I'm going to have to do that for every chemical in the balanced equation as well, which means that we've got our carbon solid, but where the original step reaction has four of those, we're going to multiply that by half. That's going to take that down to 2. Uh, again, we've got 6H2 in there, but multiply by half, that's 3H2, gas. And then we've got our one oxygen there, in the original version of the step equation, well, we have to multiply that by half as well. We have to take everything in the reaction and multiply it by the same value because we're scaling by amount, and you have to scale everything, otherwise it's a different chemical reaction. The other thing that we need to scale is delta H for this new reaction, or new version of the reaction, is going to have to be minus one half of the original delta H of minus 555.2 kilojoules per mole. That's again because since we've reversed the direction of the reaction, the sign of the energy change has to become the opposite of what it was. That's where the minus comes from. And of course, the one half is because we're scaling about amount and enthalpy is a, uh, an extensive property that is going to depend on amount. So this is going to become plus. Uh, and let's do some math in my head. Always a tricky idea, but 200 and 77.6 kilojoules per mole is what I'm getting for that. So that's to get ethanol in the right place. If we look at our second reactant, oxygen, well, we see that shows up in step reactions one, two, and three. Since it's showing up in several places, we're not going to touch it. Everything else should hopefully sort out once we got the other stuff so let's now look at the first of our products, the acetic acid liquid. And what we see is that shows up in one and only one place. That shows up in step reaction two, which is great for us. And it shows up with a stoichiometric coefficient of one as a product. Well, in the overall balanced equation we're trying to match, it shows up as a product with a stoichiometric coefficient of one. What that's telling us is 
Step reaction two, we can leave as is. Hooray, good for us. Let's just write it down though, exactly the way it is. Two carbon solid plus two hydrogen gas plus O2 gas is going to give us that liquid acetic acid. And since we've done nothing to the reaction in terms of changing its direction or its amount, well, that's going to stay at minus 484.3 kilojoules per mole. Our last thing in the overall balanced equation is liquid water. Well, we see water again shows up in a couple of places. It shows up as a gas in step reaction three, but the only place it shows up as a liquid is in step reaction four. Again, states of matter are very important. So this shows up in one and only one place, that's step reaction four. We want water liquid as a product with a stoichiometric coefficient of one. In step reaction four, we have it as a reactant with a stoichiometric coefficient of one. So that means we need to reverse step reaction four. So let's do that. That means we're gonna get H2O gas gives us H2O liquid and the delta H for this reaction is going to be the negative of the 44.0 kilojoules per mole because we have reversed the reaction. And so, yeah, that's now negative 44.0 kilojoules per mole. Again, this is just really the negative of what was the enthalpy of vaporization for this particular thing, the phase change. Now step reaction three has a few things in there. It's got some oxygen and it's got some water gas, but we're gonna leave that for now. Effectively what step reaction three is telling me is there's probably going to be something when I add these three step reactions together that doesn't actually add up to the overall reaction. And I'm gonna need step reaction three to kind of figure out the last bits. So let me just add up the three step reactions that I've got. Again, reactants stay on one side of the arrow, products on the other. Let's just gather everything together. So from all the reactants, we have the ethanol liquid from the first step reaction, plus two carbon solid, plus two H2 gas, plus O2 gas, from the second step reaction, and then we're gonna add some water gas from that fourth step reaction. And again, these are the modified versions. We're gonna to gather together all our products in that case, two carbon solid plus three H2 gas plus half O2 gas uh, plus CH3, COOH, our acetic acid liquid, and our liquid water. And what I can do is calculate the delta H for this particular reaction. We'll worry about crossing out some things first. Uh, afterwards, I just want to get this done. It's going to be the plus 277.6 kilojoules per mole. plus minus 484.3 kilojoules per mole. And plus minus 44.0 kilojoules per mole. So whatever reaction we get from the three modified step reactions that we've dealt with to this point, we'll have an energy change of let me just do my math here. 277.6 minus 484.3 minus 44. So at this point, we've got minus 250.7 kilojoules per mole. 
but is this the reaction we want? My guess is the problem is telling us no, because there's another step reaction we haven't used yet. But let's figure out what we can cancel out. We see there's this two carbon here on the reactant side and the two carbon here on the product side. We can cancel that out. There's two hydrogen here on the reactant side, but three there. So we can cancel out two of them, leaving one hydrogen gas as a product. And the same thing can happen here. We can cancel out half an oxygen here, but only if we realize that that's only going to cancel half of that and leave half of an oxygen here. So let me rewrite this just so we've got a better sense of where we are. Really, the step reactions that we've worked with to this point have given us the energy or enthalpy change for this reaction. Because these are the chemicals we have left once we do our canceling. So we've got liquid ethanol as a reactant, one stoichiometric coefficient, exactly what we want. But we've got only half of an O2 when we want a full O2, and we've got some water gas that we don't want. This is not the reaction we're interested in. We also see that uh, we do have the right products though, one stoichiometric coefficient of the acetic acid liquid and one of the liquid water. Oh, wait a second. These are not all the chemicals we want. I missed one. Look at this. Hydrogen. So you got to be careful uh, when you're organizing yourself. There's some hydrogen here as well on the product side. Uh, yeah, so there we have that. So let's compare this reaction to what we actually wanted to solve. One stoichiometric coefficient of reactant ethanol is exactly what we wanted. That half oxygen does not match the full stoichiometric coefficient of oxygen. And we also see that we've got this extra water gas as a reactant that isn't in the overall balanced equation. We'll also see that we've got that extra H2 gas as a product that is not in the overall balanced equation. In other words, that minus 250.7 kilojoules per mole is not for the reaction we're interested in. It's for this reaction. But step reaction three, the reaction we haven't used yet is how we're going to handle that. Because if you notice very carefully, we've got hydrogen gas here, where we have two of them there. We've got some oxygen gas here, where we've got some of them there. And we've got some water gas here and some water gas there. Let's focus on that water gas. It's a chemical that we want to get rid of. Uh, usually when it comes to the step reactions, hydrogen and oxygen are going to come along for the ride. So leave them till the absolute end if you have to. Let's focus on that water. We've got one stoichiometric coefficient of water gas that we don't want, which means we need to somehow add it in as one stoichiometric coefficient of water gas as a product, and then we can cancel it out on both sides. Well, we have in step reaction three, two stoichiometric coefficients as a product. We want one. So let's take step reaction three and multiply it by a half. In doing that, I'm going to get H2 gas plus half of one half O2 gas is going to give me one water in the gas phase. And delta H for this reaction, this new version of step reaction three, is going to have to be half of the original, which was minus 483.6 kilojoules per mole, which is going to be minus 241.8 kilojoules per mole. Now if I take these two reactions and add them together, what we're going to see is this H2 here and that H2 here is going to cancel out. 
this half O2 as a reactant and this half O2 as a reactant are going to combine together to give us a full O2. And our water gas here and our water gas there are going to cancel out. All of a sudden we're left with CH3, CH2OH liquid plus one wa oxygen, sorry, gas will give us CH3COOH liquid plus liquid water, which is the overall balanced equation we're interested in. Delta H for this reaction is going to be the delta H from here for the th first, uh, well, first step reactions one, two, and four that we manipulated and got together. So we said that was minus 250.7 kilojoules per mole. And to that we're gonna add our minus 241.8 kilojoules per mole representing our third step reaction that we modified. And that's gonna give us minus 492.5 kilojoules per mole for the enthalpy change of this particular reaction using Hess's law. Now I said there were a few things I was gonna to wanna to point out. Let's look at our first two step reactions in this particular case. In the first one, we are creating liquid ethanol from elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And in the second step reaction, we are creating ethanol from the elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Effectively, your step reactions don't have to be something that could actually really be accomplished in a lab. It's not like we have the technology to just build up molecules from uh, their elements just yet. But again, it doesn't matter. This is all a conceptual idea that we're talking about the energy contents relative to things. So these formation reactions of things from the elements turn out to be a very powerful way of applying Hess's law without having to deal with all these step reactions. That's going to be what you see next in your course.